yeah, it's been a while since I vlogged. And honestly, it's just because life with three kids is wild. Some days are amazing, everyone's in a good mood, I'm on top of things, and I'm feeling like super mom, and it's awesome. Other days, I literally have not gotten out of my pajamas the entire day. In both of those circumstances, the last thing I wanna do is grab a camera and film it. Thank you to those who have stuck around because I think I've been uploading at this point like one video a month. I'm just trying to pop in when I can, but I have been doing a lot more short form content through YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, TikTok. If you're interested in keeping up with my life, I guess that's the avenues I've been taking lately. It's also the busiest time of the year. Right around August, September, October, that's when all the birthdays are. Well, two of the kids' birthdays, Richie's birthday, our anniversary, we have like weddings, work events with Richie's job, like just every weekend is packed. So yeah, this weekend we're gonna be celebrating Jace's birthday. He's turning four, I cannot believe it. To those who have been here since he was born, isn't that wild that he's turning four years old? He's funny, goofy, smart, loves to negotiate. <laughs> I love that kid. So today, the two older kiddos are at my mom's house. I've got Theo. What I'm really hoping to accomplish today is to actually transition Theo out of my room because he's been with me in the bassinet this entire time. He is a little bit past three months and I just feel like it's time. And if you're a mom out there, please don't feel like you need to compare to my situation. Yeah, just do whatever feels right for you. But today is the day, it needs to happen. And what that means is that Aria is gonna be moving into Jace's room. I'm actually more nervous about that transition because they've never shared a room before. <laughs> and so Theo will be moving into Aria's old room. If you're wondering what we've done for scheduling with him, it's been the same as all my other kids. We do moms on call schedules. They have a book you can read. I'll link it below, um, or you could just literally Google the schedules. I mean, every day is a little different, but typically we try to stay on that schedule during the day, but we're pretty flexible. And then at nighttime, he's still waking up like at least twice a night feeding. So I'm thinking transitioning his room is going to help with him waking up a little bit less because I really am a believer that if he's not in my room and he doesn't smell me, that should help. I'm just kind of still in that fog, in that cloud. As you can see when I talk, sometimes it's like, I don't even, not making sense. I really am a person that needs sleep. I feel like this is the first step to get him closer to sleeping through the night me to get more rest because mommy needs to get rest in order to be sane and for this household to be functioning correctly. That is key. Mama needs to be healthy and well rested. In other news, I've been dealing with mastitis, which has been very, very challenging. I think it was kind of mild because I was able to get it under control and didn't have to get on antibiotics or anything, but my sister recommended the supplement, which was the only thing that helped me. And it's that legendary milk brand, Sunflower Lecithin. And I also bought cabbage. I was putting cabbage on my clogged side and that combo fixed the problem. Um, okay, home updates. So there's a dead animal, I think. We don't know for sure. There's a stink in the house. We've searched high and low have not been able to find it exactly, but we kind of think we found like a vent that it might be trapped in. Ugh, I hate talking about this because it's gross, but it is new homeowner stuff that we just, you, you deal with when you get a house. We have someone coming today to check our vents and hopefully discover what the problem is. Yeah, I kind of took a little break from doing like yard work because we did so much. Took a little break from buying stuff for the house because it gets expensive, but we did like move a few things around um, and also built our first, had our first like project that we did. We made a little built-in for our breakfast nook, which turned out super cute. I'm hoping to share a blog post soon on like how we did it in case anybody wants to give it a try. But now we've got like this cute little breakfast nook bench here that has been so much more functionable for our family when we eat there. Let's head to my room We'll chat a little bit more. So yeah, you guys know we've been working with a pretty small space in our bedroom. So all I could do was put his little bassinet right there on my side of the bed and a few of his stuff in my little dresser there. 
And that's been his nursery nook. It's worked out like we just have the bare necessities here. Kept it very simple. This has fit so perfectly in here that I've even been able to roll it out of the room when I need to. I'll talk more about this thing in a second, but I've been able to like get it around this corner perfectly <laughs> and wheel it out. If you're not familiar with um, our bassinet already, I feel like I've talked about it quite a bit, but there might be some new people here. I really do love this thing. It's called the Baby Bay, and I don't know if they're still selling it or what's going on with this company. Um, I can provide a link if you want to look into it. I feel like there's others that are kind of similar to it, but interesting thing about this one is that it converts to a full-size crib, so that's what I'm going to be doing today, and you'll get to see that. Um, I've used this for Aria, I've used it for Theo, I've converted it back and forth multiple times and it has just been like such a blessing and everything I want in a bassinet. The way it pulls right up to the bed, it has caster roller wheels that just make it like easy to move around if you need to. Like I said, sometimes I take it out and would go to the kitchen with him. And then back here is where I've always kept my diapers and wipes for convenient, easy access. In the middle of the night nursing pads bibs and then here I just put um a laundry hamper so I was just throwing our stuff in there in the middle of the night like wet nursing pads or if he's um, spitting up on things or has a blowout it's so convenient to just throw it in like I've been able to just do everything from this spot for the past three months it's been wonderful but oh sound machine we have the portable one that I just keep plugged in that's been convenient um, what else? This is going to be his last time sleeping in here. Because for your next nap, we're going to put you in the big crib. You're going to have a big crib. Yeah, I can't believe it. I need you to take a nap. Okay, Theo's down. I'm going to show you guys Aria's room in a minute. But before we continue, I'm going to share a quick word from today's sponsor, Green Chef. I know it's like the hottest day of the year right now. I think it's over 100 degrees. It's 98 degrees. But I'm gonna be making Thai coconut chicken soup today. Richie's gonna think I'm so crazy. But this looks like a good soup for summer if you're gonna do a soup in the summer. I also have had mastasis, mastitis. How the heck do you say that dang word? Mastitis. Mastitis for the past couple days. And I always want a bit of soup when I don't feel good. I chose from the fast and fit meal kits this time from Green Chef because Richie has been really doing good on his fitness journey. So I really wanna make sure I'm supporting him in that. Green Chef really helps us eat clean and live a healthy lifestyle even though we're in such a crazy time postpartum. But I know that when we're getting Green Chef for the week, it's gonna be a healthy week. So that's a good feeling and I don't have to put any effort into it or think much. At the same time, flavor is really important to Richie. He's Latino. I have been scolded many times for not adding enough salt, spices, whatever. To me, I feel like it's definitely salty enough. To him, it's not. So Green Chef is helping manage your weight, eat more veggies, support your wellness goals while not skimping out on good flavor. Also what's cool is every Green Chef customer gets a free session with their nutritionist. So sign up and start your journey towards better health today. Food is done, best part is the minimal cleanup because it was just all in one pot. It's a soup, so it's like probably the fastest meal I've ever done with Green Chef. I have two bags that I'm gonna be recycling. My sink is not full, like this is the best. I think this is my problem and why I'm just not in love with cooking. It's partially because of all the cleanup involved after, but this makes it a little easier, which is nice. All right, I'm gonna give this a try. Mmm. It's that coconut milk that I love. I left out one of the crushed red pepper packets because I wanna see if my kids will try this and if it's too spicy, they're not gonna like it. If you guys are looking for a meal kit to try out, you can use my code 60NicoleG for 60% off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. All right, here's Aria's 
room currently. There's not a lot of natural light in here. The windows are quite small, which I kind of like because when it comes to, you know, it being nice and dark in here for naps and stuff, I haven't done anything in the kids' rooms. I haven't painted, I haven't redone them. I haven't gotten like new stuff. I did get this blue rug since we are moving Theo in here. Um, but other than that, we're just using whatever we have, whatever furniture we have available, whatever decor. I haven't even put up decor in kids' rooms. Like, I've truly not done anything for the kids' rooms in the past three months. Currently, I have Theo's dresser in here because you saw in my bedroom, we did not have a lot of space. This crib is basically a hand-me-down from my cousin, and we had to take it apart from her house and reassemble it in this room. So, like, this is not going to fit through the door to move into Jace's room for Aria to continue to use. So that being said, it's just gonna stay in this room. Theo's gonna be using this crib, and that's why I have to take Theo's old bassinet, the baby bay bassinet half, attach it to the other half to create the big crib, which Aria used to be in anyway. It should still be big enough for her. I just have to lower the platform like to the floor. I just don't think she's ready yet for a big girl bed. We're not gonna deal with that transition right now. That's a whole other thing. I try to keep my kids in cribs as long as possible. <laughs> Closet is a mess. Currently it's storage slash Aria's some of her clothes. Yep, let's just start taking out Aria's clothes. This is the rest of the baby bay parts. This, Jace's Dino Pinata. I know Richie thinks I'm crazy because I will move furniture around uh, like 50 times just to see how it looks in a position because I can't imagine it otherwise. just really cute that they're gonna share a room like I'm excited about this for them I'm just nervous about how in the world this is gonna work for like the mornings because typically Jace wakes up before Aria and I don't want him to wake her up but like what if she wakes up first and she's yelling and wakes him up I have like that toddler clock still Jace knows like if it's red you can't leave the room yet it turns green at seven so I'm gonna tell him that he needs to teach that to Aria in the morning. In terms of naps, um, I don't know, I don't know how they're gonna do. <laughs> Cause Aria still fully will take like a two, two and a half hour nap. Whereas Jace, it'll be shorter or sometimes it's like, he just won't take it at all. I forget what this is called, but this is like all you need and it's kind of a cheap little thing, so. Anyways, I'm actually gonna start by taking off the wheels. You guys hear noises it's because the air duct guys are here so they're taking a vacuum and they're sucking out the air ducts hopefully they suck whatever the heck's in there i need to take these ones lower these platforms all the way down to the bottom to be even and then actually take one of these off and connect the two halves together hopefully this lasts Okay, things got a little crazy because the AC guys arrived. So I didn't realize how extensive it was gonna be when they got here. 
I guess I just thought they were gonna look at like one vent to see if there was an animal in there, but they actually were cleaning out the entire air ducts, which is good. We needed to do that because the people who lived here before us had cats and dogs, and we know there was like pet hair all up in the vent system, and whatever. So that was overdue anyway. They were here for a few hours. I couldn't really film anymore because they just sort of took over the house. But I have bad news. They did not find an animal. There was no sign of an animal in there. So we're still very confused as to where that smell's coming from. It's incredibly frustrating because we like we smell it and in, in like the corner of the house, but like we don't see it so i think we might just have to like wait for the smell to pass and like decompose oh i don't even want to think about it i'm like plating food right now i ended up just cooking another green chef meal didn't have any lunch because i was working on this project all day and so i'm just gonna gobble this up but i will do a check-in um tomorrow to let you guys know how the kids slept tonight and then during tomorrow's nap and I'll also show you guys like the final bedrooms once I get a few little finishing touches up. So today I made Middle Eastern style beef and rice bowls. Didn't put in a bowl, but I knew I was gonna love this one because it has dates. so tired i ended up taking a nap today while the kids napped and now me and jace are up he wanted to see how i film aria is still napping right but it's been two days since i started this video so i actually have two days of notes to share on how the new room situation has been going so overall i would say it's gone pretty well um but i did have to take a nap today because i am still tired so i'll start off with theo since that has to do with, you know, how nights are going with Theo. Basically, Monday night, the first night, I did put him to bed at 7.30, nursed him as usual. I then snuck in at 10.45 to attempt to do like a dream feed. So I fed him a little bit, put him back down. I didn't change him or anything. So an hour later, he did, he was crying. I snuck back in. I thought he just needed a pacifier, but then I realized his diaper was wet. So I think he wanted to get changed. So I really should have changed him when I did the dream feed earlier. He gets very irritated if his diaper is even just a little bit wet. So that could affect him like waking up more than usual. But anyways, so that was 11.45. I went back to sleep and then he woke up at 4.30 a.m., which normally when he would be in the bassinet with me in the room, I would just grab him and feed him right away. But this time I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just go attempt to put the pacifier in his mouth and see if that helps. And it actually did help. So he went back to sleep and he didn't wake up again until 6 a.m. So then I nursed him at 6 a.m. Pretty much the day was like started at that point because like the kids get up at seven. So that was my night with Theo. The kids, the first night, they went to bed perfectly. They were very excited about their new room. Um, they weren't even talking or anything. Like I put a monitor in the room so I could see them and they literally just went to sleep. <laughs> Nothing exciting happened. I did give Jace a whole speech and lowdown of like what to do in the morning and he did so good. I was up with Theo at like 6 a.m. I said that I was nursing him. I did hear the kids get up at around 6.15, which is a lot earlier than usual. And I heard Aria first and Jace did confirm that she was squealing in her crib first. So he went and grabbed some books, gave them to her in the in her crib because she can't get out of her crib and then he like climbed in with her he had he brought her some toys too so they were just reading books in there chilling and talking and he didn't even turn the sound machine off it was still on the light was still off and i know that he was just trying to keep her busy to wait until the light turned green so he did a really good job so i went in and i was like jace i saw that you were taking care of your sister and gave her books and stuff you did great perfect that's exactly what i want you to do in the morning if she wakes up too early the second night, so that was Tuesday night, I did a regular, you know, nighttime feed, 7 p.m. like bedtime, put Theo down around 7.30, he went to sleep, snuck back in there around 10.30 p.m. for the dream feed. So I went like a little bit earlier and I did make sure that that time I changed his diaper while I was in there anyway, just to make sure he was like completely dry and would sleep as long as possible. So he didn't wake up until 4.30 a.m. I did end up feeding him 
part of me is like, maybe I should have just put the pacifier in his mouth and you know, see if he could last a little bit longer because I feel like he could have. And, and then he didn't wake up again until I went in there at 7 a.m. to wake him up actually. And that feeding, he really wasn't taking much, which tells me he was still pretty full from that 4.30 feeding, which tells me that he probably could have lasted a little bit longer. So essentially at this point, what I'm trying to do for Theo is keep trying to stretch that time that he's asleep. So I'm gonna take that dream feed and just creep it a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier every night. And then that four o'clock when he seems to be waking up, I'm just gonna go in and pop the pacifier in. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask Richie to do that because he's usually up anyway at 4.30 in the morning. He gets up super early and he will like go to the gym. So he might as well be the one to just go in, get the pacifier in Theo's mouth, then I don't have to get up at all. And then we basically would have reached the 12 hour nighttime sleep. So. This is kind of what I just did with my other kids. Um, I feel like with them, I was a little bit more on top of it, more like strict about it and really followed the moms on call book like to a T. With Theo, I've been a little bit more relaxed about it. And then the kids, they did great. They woke up at like 6.30 a.m. I saw them on the monitor and Jace just actually stayed in bed at this time. He didn't even go into Aria's bed and do anything. Oh, I didn't talk about naps. Okay, so that's because the first full day, I actually had them at their grandma's house and they didn't take a nap. Um, right now was Thank our- Thank you. You're welcome. Right now was my first like nap attempt with them and it also went very well. I told Jace if he wakes up before Aria to just sneak out like a quiet mouse, right? You snuck out of the room. So I put them down at one o'clock. They went down really well, fell asleep and Jace snuck out of the room quietly at three. He woke up, so he still did a really good two hour nap. Aria is still sleeping right now, so I'm probably gonna pop in and check on her. But I'm really happy with how this transition has gone. I keep this down here because I still have a bunch of like maternity things and pumps, bottles in there, things I grab pretty frequently. Kept this box to keep diapers organized. That's where I'm gonna put like any clothes that don't fit Theo anymore or Aria that I can work on getting rid of. A little storage in the corner. Organized some of these up here. Yes, honey. Do you wanna come play over here? Here's just a little area for some personalized cute stuff that I forgot I even had. Our little thrifted frame. Inside here, I like to keep a couple toys so that when I'm nursing on the rocking chair, Jason and Aria can easily access some toys and play out here on the rug. Super convenient. Here's my uh, really ugly rocking chair that is in <laughs> really bad shape. Um, so I just threw blankets on top of it because I don't know what to do with it at this point. Um, but yeah, still, still going. So we're using it. We're keeping it. I threw Jace's old poster frame up there of when he was a baby, but that's okay. Just wanted a little piece of art on the wall because there was nothing on the wall. And a little bookshelf here for books. And then kind of put the crib in the corner because it didn't fit anywhere else nicely and then here i just put a little hook up to hold a couple of things a few baskets down there with toys and like play mats so that theo can sit out but yeah that is our new space here i think it does the job and love that i didn't have to buy anything new for it i just pulled all the old things from their old rooms okay so the older kids Put a little rack up here to hold their hats, their backpacks, always something they want to hang up. I am excited for the day that they're both in twin beds and I can get like matching beds and put them on either side or maybe like a vintage bunk bed, something cute. Um, but for now, I'm just glad these fit because this room is a little bit bigger than the other one. Just popped up a little frame up here. I pulled this out. Do you guys remember when I made this? Not in the best shape. It kind of smudged a bit. Little Montessori shelf set up here. A couple more books. 
Um, most of their toys are downstairs, so I like to keep more like the Montessori stuff up here. Things that are a little easier to clean or things that are more educational that I could sit and do with them. And basket. And then this is where we have Jace's dresser. Some cute little stuff here. So there you have it. The room tours. Um, if anybody else has had to go through this recently with transitioning rooms, let me know in the comments how it went. If you had a similar experience, if you had a different experience, thank you so much for tuning in and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye!